Graduands, welcome to your virtual graduation ceremony. We are now live on YouTube and your ceremony will now begin. Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Professor Martin Oliver. I'm the Pro Director for Academic Development at the Institute of Education. It's my honour and privilege to welcome you to UCL's 2021 Virtual Graduation Ceremony. I'm delighted to see so many graduates from the Department of Curriculum, Pedagogy and Assessment here with us today. And I know that we have many friends and family members watching as well. We hope you are as proud as we are of this group and what they have achieved. Obviously, we wish we could have been celebrating in different circumstances this summer, but until we can gather in person safely, I'm delighted that we can at least come together virtually to mark this occasion today. We're going to try our very best to replicate the experience that you would have had this summer. We'll be sharing a short video from our provost. You'll hear speeches from myself and Professor Nicola Walsh, the head of department for, curric for curriculum, pedagogy and assessment. And also hear from an alumnus about what life can be like after you finish your degree at UCL. First, a couple of points of housekeeping. I'm sure many of us are now very familiar with virtual meetings. Please do feel free to share messages of congratulations in the chat function, which you should find at the bottom of the screen. But otherwise, please stay muted unless you're called on to unmute. Graduates, we will be announcing your names in groups. Once your name has been announced, we encourage you to turn on your camera so that you appear on the screen. At the end of each group, we will offer you our congratulations and then ask you to turn your cameras off again before we move to the next group. Now I'd like to introduce you to the virtual platform party that joins us today to celebrate with you and who you'll be able to see on your screens. Colleagues, as I introduce you, please do unmute yourselves and say hello to our audience. First, Dr. Lauren Clark. Hi everybody, congratulations. I'm really proud of everything you did in a very challenging year. Dr. Cassette Chrisan. Hello, hi everybody from the mathematics education team. Uh, congratulations, well, well done on your great achievement. Dr. Joe Fraser Pierce. Hi everybody, and well done. Um, really looking forward to this afternoon. So good job, and uh, yeah, well done. Jeremy Howard. Uh, congratulations, everyone, particularly those in citizenship, RE or history, and anyone who took teaching controversial issues module this year. But congratulations, everyone. Dr. Kim Inslee. Very well done to everybody. But I also want to say well done to all of your family members who are watching on YouTube, because you've had a part in this as well. Well done, everyone. Professor Mary Richardson. 
Congratulations, everybody. It's a wonderful achievement, and I really hope you have a wonderful day to celebrate that. And particular congratulations to all my assessment students. Sinead Vaughan. If Sinead's not here, I'll move to Nicola Walsh. Okay. In that case, um, we'll now move to the ceremony proper. So I now declare this ceremony open. And next we'll hear a message. Oh, Sinead, do you want to say something before we move on? Can't hear you. I think you're muted. Okay. Thank you for popping up anyway. Good to see you. Um, let's move now to the message from the Provost. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Spence, President and Provost of UCL. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all today to your virtual graduation ceremony, and I'd like to offer my wholehearted congratulations to you as you graduate from UCL and move forward to the next stage of your lives. Of course, I speak to many of you dispersed across the world today. We can agree that this situation isn't and hasn't been ideal, and we'd prefer to celebrate in person, but that doesn't diminish your remarkable achievements in any way. The whole UCL community is behind you, and we're in awe of the resilience that you've shown in the face of the challenges posed by the pandemic. Each of you has shown what you can achieve, even under the most trying circumstances. This year marks the 195th anniversary of UCL's founding, and we continue to base our principles and beliefs on those of Jeremy Bentham, a commitment to social justice and the availability of education to all. At UCL, we've always believed in changing the world for the better, and as graduates, you'll carry that goal forward. You're a part of UCL's history, but just as importantly of its future too, this is not the end of your UCL journey. You're joining an impressive global alumni community of over 300,000 graduates who support and celebrate each other and who go on to achieve remarkable things around the world. UCL and the alumni community is here for you, not only as you take the next step in your career journey, but for life. So thank you, thank you and congratulations. I look forward to a time when we'll be able to come together in person to further celebrate your amazing achievements. So I'll now ask uh, Professor Mary Richardson, who's our Professor of Educational Assessment to present the graduates. Mary. Thank you very much, Martin. I'm delighted to present our graduates. I have pleasure in presenting to you these candidates who have been awarded a postgraduate diploma or Master of Arts. The following candidate has been awarded a postgraduate diploma in development education and global learning. Laura Cesaro. Master of Arts in Advanced Educational Practice. Chris Delatado Barabas. George Clancy. Molly Rose Metcalf. Alicia K. Vidal. Nicholson. Master of Arts in Curriculum Pedagogy and Assessment. Rotem Kama. Jennifer Prudence Kinraid. Master of Arts in Development Education and Global Learning. Maxine Elizabeth Clemenson. Samantha Travis Jafuna, Jack Webster. Master of Arts in Education. Fei Fei Bai. Daniel Blackburn. Christina Louise Campbell. Irlanda. Christine Cerullo. Zihao Chen. 
Jiaoming Chen, Lucy Ann Deary, Shashing Dong, Lillian Doyle, Ziwei Du. I would like to pause there and ask my colleagues to unmute, please and give a rousing round of applause to our esteemed graduates, please. Hey, well done, well done. Thank you, everybody. We continue on with the following candidates who have been awarded a Master of Arts in Education. How Shren Du. Harriet Louise Eckbury. Jiron Fan. Anran Gu. Yue Gu. Merve Goral. Haitian Her. Mongshe. Ooh. Jennifer Anne Marie Hutton. Seya Jung. Ven Chi Jung. Hu Wei Ting Ching. Charlotte Louise Joyce. Andrea. Condiatis. Ching Ching Li. Ray Chao Li. Hei Yi Li. Uen Chun Li. Jia Wen Lin. Jia Wei Lin. I would like to pause there again and ask my colleagues to unmute, please, and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. Hey, well Ooh. done, everybody. Hey. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. We continue on with the following candidates who have been awarded a Master of Arts in Education. Zhu Wu Liao. Yifan Liao. Xuan Liao. Shi Liao. Jiashen Liao. Wu Shi Liao. Yuan Liao. Ji Lu. Chen Liu, Sarah Elizabeth McGee, Madina Mutia Mohammed, T May Anne Nuan, Katie Louise Osman, Raujia Paul, Zishen. Boom. Le Wei Cho. G A Yu Sha. Sidra Shafik. Zhao Han Shao. Michelle Shaw Traitel. Once again, I'll pause there and ask my colleagues to unmute, please, and give our esteemed graduates a round of applause, please. Hey, well Woo! done. Woo! Very well done. Thank you, everybody. We continue on with the following candidates who have been awarded a Master of Arts in Education. Koske. Shouji, Xing Shu, 
Sung Sung. Shu Ling Suan. Tao Tao. Charlotte Susan Thackeray. Hiroko Ueda. Her Luen Wong. Hao Shang Wong. Xiao Yu Wong. Xia Ning Wong. Ben Jie Wong. Xie Yi Wei. Mong Xie Xie. Yu Ying Ben Shu. Chun Chen Shu. Xing Hu Yang. Mong Ying Yang. Chao Han Yang. Xing Ran Wu. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to pause there and again ask my colleagues to please unmute and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. Well done, everybody. Congratulations. Really well done. Many congratulations. We continue on with the following candidates who have been awarded a Master of Arts in Education. Shua Fei Wu. Wu Cheng. Yi Ching Chong. Wei Chao. Ying Chong. Ching Wu Cho. O Di Shu. Yi Nan Chu. Bear Chu. Xiao Yu Chu. I would like to pause here and ask that the virtual platform unmute again and give a round of applause to all the graduates in the Master of Arts in Education. Well done. Congratulations, everybody. Yes. I am now delighted to welcome Professor Nicola Walsh, Head of Department for Curriculum, Pedagogy and Assessment to present the remaining graduates. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Richardson. I am now delighted to present the graduates, and I have pleasure in presenting to you these candidates who have been awarded a Master of Arts in Education Assessment. Shui Yi Chun. Jane Chia Pei En. Kenneth Su Chu Liang. Carl Headley Morris, Yue Feng Qing, Fair Man Li, Nitin Sandan Ruhunu, Sarah Namala Sari, Iya Huang. For a Master of Arts in Education, Juan B. Kaba Gorkum Altunbas. Kaomin Liao. Yi Xiao Wong. Monchi Fen. For a Master of Arts in Geography Education, Paul Christian Albert. And for a Master of Arts in History Education, Michael Doran Hill and Ian Maris. And I would like to pause there and ask my colleagues to unmute and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. Well done. Very well done. Congratulations. Congratulations, everyone.
continue on now with the following candidates who have been awarded a Master of Arts in Mathematics Education. King Yue Chun. Sarah Helen Elizabeth Craig. Alison Flack. Maria Evangelia Paliora. Han Lee. Carmel Jura Carey Mahanti. Catherine Mary Riding. Aoshia Wong. Su Zen Wong. Ping Yang. And Lamona. Finally, Master of Arts in Science Education, Lisa Charlotte Hardy. And I would like to again pause there and ask my colleagues to unmute and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. Congratulations. <laughs> now turn to the successful candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy. Doctoral candidates undertake a programme of independent research over at least three years. They must demonstrate a capacity to pursue original based thought and action and provide a distinct contribution to their subject. A research degree requires total commitment and is at the very pinnacle of academic study. I have the pleasure in presenting to you the following candidates. The degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Curriculum and Pedagogy Dr. Lauren Beth Clark. The Doctor of Philosophy in Education, Museum Studies, Science and Technology Studies, Dr. Eleanor Sophie Armstrong. The Doctor of Philosophy in Educational and Social Science, Curriculum, Pedagogy and Assessment, Dr. Emiliano Tiberio Bossio. The Doctor of Philosophy in Islamic and Media Education, Dr. Mohammed Muhyiddin bin Pepperhol Wesley. Our next award has been awarded posthumously. Doctor of Philosophy in Science Education, Dr. Adrian Jackson. Adrian was one of the nicest people those of us who met him at UCL Institute of Education have ever known. A gifted physicist and teacher, he began his PhD with us in 2011. At that time, Adrian was teaching at an all-girls school and the focus of his research was on what can be done to help more girls to continue with physics once it is no longer compulsory. A combination of family commitments, Arthur was one year old at the time, and his move to become head of department in another all-girls school meant that progress was slower in the initial years of his PhD than Adrian hoped, something that's not at all unusual among those doing part but Adrian persevered and made progress and eventually the thesis was submitted. In supervision, Adrian combined insight with modesty, a great sense of humour and a general positivity about life. When Adrian had his diver, he was told he had to make changes before he would be awarded his PhD, something that is the norm. It was soon after the visor that Adrian was diagnosed with cancer and work on the thesis revisions inevitably paused while he dealt with chemotherapy and associated treatment. However, even though Adrian was not anticipating that he would recover, he continued to keep in touch with his supervisors and he had his final supervision just four days before he died. It seemed so unfair on Adrian, on his family and on his friends and colleagues that Adrian died far, far too young. Those of us who met him during his doctoral research consider ourselves extremely fortunate to have known him. We continue on now with the following candidate who has been awarded a Doctor of Philosophy in Science Education, Dr. Victoria Olabunmi Mohammed. And finally, Doctor of Philosophy in Secondary School Teachers, Dr. Alison Gibson. That concludes all of our candidates. I would ask that the virtual platform party all unmute themselves and give a final round of applause to all of our esteemed graduates.
Congratulations. Very well done. Well done. Excellent. Congratulations. I'd now like to give a short presentation to all of our graduates. Graduands. The word graduate comes from the Latin word gradus, which means a step climb. At its simplest, in sitting virtually here today, you have figuratively climbed a step. The notion of climbing in this metaphor suggests an element of challenge, something not achieved easily, something which has required substantial effort. Getting to this point today has not been easy. It has required considerable effort on your part. Within your various programmes, you have faced and addressed a daunting academic workload, no doubt sacrificing family and social time to meet these demands. You have all had to confront unexpected and unfamiliar situations and overcome difficulties that at times may have seemed insurmountable barriers to achieving your goals. Many of you have had the additional challenge of studying alongside practice and of course you have all persevered through the most challenging of pandemics. But whatever struggles you have overcome them and that is what makes your graduation, your step climb, special and valuable. And as I stand here today I see a particularly inspirational group of graduates. You have made this time not just for your own sake, but in search of being able to support others to do themselves, to the same themselves. Through the field of education, you have committed yourselves to helping other people take their own steps forward on their own challenging journey. Mahatma Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Within the field of education, you will support people on their own climb, and in doing so, continue to successfully negotiate yours. There's a famous rock climber and author, Conrad Anker, who has successfully reached the summit of all the world's major mountains. For example, the Vincent Massif in Antarctica, Everest several times. Anker says, the summit is what drives us, but it is the climb itself that matters. For those in education, Challenges can be hard. You may not always reach the summit, but it is the climb that matters. Always believe in yourself and in your abilities. When times are tough and the climb is hard, remember this moment today and how far you have already come. I would also urge you to travel this path because you love it. The philosophers of the ancient world said that when a person is intensely focused on work because of their passion for it, their mind is joined with the mind of the stars. I believe that the ancients were right. It all begins and ends with passion. When times are tough and the climb seems too much, passion is what keeps you putting one foot in front of the other. In our professions, it is a shared passion for making the world a bit better around us that keeps us on our journey. Don't ever lose that. I consider it to be a real privilege to be with you here today. Thank you for giving me the honour of your attention. I wish you every success as you continue your journey. May you have some downhill free wheels to give you the energy and momentum to approach your next mountain. Thank you very much and congratulations again to everybody. And I'm now delighted to invite Professor Martin Oliver, Co-Director of Academic Development, to the faculty address. Thank you. And um, thank you for that lovely talk. That was that was really touching. Um, as Pro-Director for Academic Development at the UCL Institute of Education, let me once again offer my congratulations to everyone who is graduating today. I also want to say congratulations to all of your family and friends who are celebrating with you and who I know will be extremely proud of everything that you've accomplished. Postgraduate study pushes us beyond our comfort zone, requiring us to engage with new ideas, develop the confidence to put our own mark on that knowledge, and then to put forward new insights. The rewards are considerable. The class of 2021, of course, shared the additional parallel journey of the shock and disruption of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I must pay tribute to our students and staff for the way in which they adapted to this and for the resilience and collegiality they showed. In the context of such disruptions, the things that do remain constant, including this important ritual of graduation, are even more welcome. While we can't yet gather in person, I hope this does not diminish the enjoyment of being able to come together to recognize the culmination of all of your hard work. We should also look forward to think about the difference that your hard work will make in the world. 
The IO's mission is to improve lives and to further social justice. It was founded in 1902 and from its roots in educating teachers for London, it has developed into a unique and world leading centre for research on education and society. This year alone, just to pick a few examples, we've launched a major new research programme that will track cohorts of individuals over the decades in order to understand social change, particularly the long term social impacts of COVID-19. Recordings of our podcasts and of events have, that share the IOE's expertise have been played over 50,000 times in over 110 countries. Meanwhile, the IOE is playing a key part in UCL's new School of Creative and Cultural Industries, which is based in the UCL East campus in Stratford. And we've also remained number one in our field in the QS World University rankings for the eighth year in a row. However, it's through you, our students and alumni, that the IOE makes the biggest impact it has in the world. This is achieved through the careers that you'll pursue and the roles that you'll serve in your wider communities. Through your studies, you have already developed your ability to make a positive difference. You have read widely, you've applied array, a, a, an array of analytical techniques and intellectual skills, you've debated, reflected, evaluated, and understood the applications and limits of research. You've learned about how to do all this in ways that demonstrate your ethical commitments. You have learned to present your findings and ideas to inform or convince others. And I'm sure you've had to make many sacrifices in order to achieve all of this. While the current context presents a really daunting world to move on into, there are reasons for optimism in our recent history, greater recognition of the impacts of inequality, greater recognition of our interconnectedness. And at an individual, uh, yeah, at an individual, societal and a global level. There's a lot of talk of building back better. And I think the really important thing now is to seize the opportunity to do that, do just that and make it real. Next year, we'll be celebrating the IOE's 120th anniversary, marking the IOE's evolution and looking forward to what comes next. In terms of this next phase in the IOE's development, we have two particular priorities. The first is to address societal problems with even greater conviction through challenge-oriented, solution-based and impact-driven work. Greater national and international collaboration and work that spans disciplinary fields will be really important in achieving that. The second priority is attending to decolonialization. Enhancing the IOE's global reach and impact also requires a genuinely decolonializing attitude, including meaningful collaborations with the diversity of communities in London, with the Global South, and with staff and students of the global majority. We hope that you will be part of next year's anniversary celebrations and also that you'll continue to engage with and help us on this longer journey. As well as being an opportunity to offer congratulations, graduation ceremonies are about saying thank you for the support of family and friends, colleagues and tutors for all the work that they've put in that is so pivotal to our students' success. So I'd like to offer my own heartfelt thanks to you all, my IOE colleagues, all of our guests today for the parts you've played in our students' achievements. At this point, it just remains for me to say that our graduates continue to be part of the IOE and the UCL family. You have joined a truly global community of UCL alumni, some 300,000 strong. And you can also join one of the numerous UCL alumni groups, which are located in many cities and regions across the world. Please do stay in contact with us. So now, as Pro Director of the Faculty, I have the pleasure of formally conferring your degrees. Colleagues, can I ask you please to unmute, turn on your videos and join me in applauding our graduates. Yay! Woo -hoo! Congratulations. Very well, well done. done. Well done, everybody. Many congratulations. Thank you. So in a moment, we're going to hear from one of our alumni members. David Stanley is a disability rights campaigner, musical director, teacher, composer, and the founder and CEO of the Music Man Project, a multi-award winning international music education service for people with disabilities. He holds a master's degree in musical analysis, a postgraduate certificate in education from the UCL Institute of Education, and the National Professional Qualification for Secondary School Headship. In 2021, David was awarded the Medal of Honor Medal of the Order of the British Empire in the Queen's New Year's Honours List for services to people with special needs. 
David was the 2020 Global Peace Ambassador for People with Disabilities and became the UK government's Disability and Access Ambassador for the Arts and Culture in 2021. He's also a member of the advisory panel for the National Plan for Music Education. He won the Lions International Outstanding Contribution to the Community Award and was named a community hero by the UK Community Network in recognition of his efforts to reach vulnerable people during the coronavirus pandemic. He reached the final of both the 2015 and 2017 Music Teacher Awards for Excellence and has been nominated for both a Pride of Britain Award and for the 33 most inspirational leaders who have made a difference. Here is David's presentation. My name is David Stanley and I'm the CEO and founder of The Music Man Project, a full-time music education and performance service for children and adults with learning disabilities. I studied PGCE in music back in 1999. Congratulations to the current graduating cohort. I hope you use this experience and qualification as a platform upon which to build a fulfilling and rewarding career. I remember that I initially resisted some of what I was told during my studies at the Institute, particularly how to write lesson plans. Ironically, it was this discipline that I relied on the most in my early career as a teacher, and I subsequently published several volumes of lesson plans and textbooks for teachers and went on to qualify as a head teacher. My advice, therefore, is to value everything you have learned because you never know when you will need it. My long and successful career as a teacher and senior leader was only possible because of my PGCE. It also prepared me for my current position at the Music Man Project. I try to provide the same high expectations, the same determination to succeed, and the same value in the power of music that underpinned my education. But I do this for my musicians with learning disabilities. My students have gone on to break a world record, to perform to members of the royal family, to inspire 10,000 mainstream primary school children, and of course to perform at both the London Palladium and the iconic Royal Albert Hall. I have duplicated my service right across the UK and have even talked in India, Nepal, South Africa and the Philippines. Just as I was helped to fulfil my potential, I now help my remarkable students fulfil theirs. I think they are the best of humanity and I have the most rewarding job in the world. My time at the Institute instilled in me a, a level of confidence that I rely on to this day. Now, two decades after my own graduation, I talk to you as a proud recipient of an honour from the Queen and the UK government's Disability and Access Ambassador for Arts and Culture. I also now sit on the advisory panel for the new National Plan for Music Education. So my career in many ways has come a full circle and my work will now inform the future direction of music education for many years to come. My advice is therefore to dream big, be determined and be creative in your career. Carve out your own distinct career path. And most of all, keep in touch with your extensive alumni network and peers. They will support you every step of the way. Thank you. Before we close the ceremony, let's colleagues turn on cameras and unmute once more for a final round of applause. So, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, and most importantly, our graduates, that concludes our virtual graduation ceremony. I'd like to invite our graduates to stay on for a short reception in which you'll be able to take selfies that you can share with your friends. 
please also take the opportunity to visit our graduation website, the address for which will be posted in the chat, to see messages from your teachers and also a video from our director, Professor Lee Wei. Finally, I'd like to offer you my wholehearted congratulations and my very best wishes for the future. Thank you.